When I met you, the clouds parted, the gates opened, and the sun shined again. And it was, um, it was like the proof point that, you know, because people always ask me, they're like, how could you quit this job that was like, you know, this job at Mondelez? Or, and I just saw that messaging was going to be bigger than what people were giving credit. And it's funny because I was just, we re-interviewed Neil, uh, the guy who sent the first text message. Um, and you, quite frankly, are the proof point, I think, in the marketplace that not only is it bigger than people have given it credit, but the opportunity to create brand and more important consumer loyalty and frictionless consumer interaction is going to probably create a new CPG company of the future. And so yeah, definitely. how did you how did you end up Can you guys hear me? No. Here. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Um, I can hear you. Yeah. That's all that matters. We just <laughs> uh, so we we've been doing this now for four years and when we first started when we first started in 2015, um, SMS was completely foreign to most people. And I remember being out of VC's office in San Francisco, and I remember specifically a very well-known consumer CPG. And uh, I remember specifically they said, if you think that you're going to get to any sizable scale only selling products over text message, like, you know, this is never going to work, basically. And I remember leaving and thinking, wow, this is like, you know, we need to maybe rethink our strategy or, um, or something. And, you know, obviously we stayed the course. And, you know, now, four years later, we have almost 200,000 customers that are all buying our products over text message. And that is, I mean, amazing proof of concept. We had Coca-Cola uh, come in and partner with us in December of last year, which was very exciting. So now we Not have... Not impressive. When Pepsi shows up, then call me. <laughs> well, listen, we're, we'll take a call from Pepsi, too. Yeah, so. just, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think that when you, when you look at, you know, what consumer, the modern consumer is looking for, you know, they're looking for frictionless access to the brands that they love and, and care about the most. And when you pair that level of convenience with a, uh, an ordering and fulfillment platform that allows consumers to get fast access to those products that they love and also you know, direct access to customer service, they can check on orders, ask questions, et cetera. Um, I mean, you really, it, it, it's a completely new model, um, but it puts the power back in the consumer's hands, which is something that, um, that I think in, in many ways has been taken out of their hands with retail and distribution and brokerage, which really kind of like prevent the brands from, from connecting with consumers. So you've gone beyond just allowing consumers to purchase via text and have it shipped to them, but literally, it, this is what I hate about you, is that, so when I was at the beauty business, I was like, you know what? We should do a, you know, uh, payment free, you know, uh, just literally go in, grab, walk out, uh, beauty store as a pop-up. And for some reason, I couldn't get over the finish line, and of course, you announced, and I was like, this is gonna be the future of retail, everybody's gonna talk about beauty and the transformation of the category, and of course, I can't get it done. And then I'm like reading, oh, New York Times, guess who did it, Zach, okay. So tell us, like, what, what, what has, why, first of all? So, uh, or what we, is, we tested out, so we tested our second brand, so the Iris Nova, which is our parent company, um, owns Dirty Lemon, and then we have uh, plans to invest in other beverage brands, um, which we're finalizing two of those investments now. And then we're also um, using our platform to create new brands. So our second brand is a retail brand called The Drugstore. And uh, basically what we're doing in that space is we're testing new beverage concepts in, a, in a, basically a working bar. Uh, where bartenders can uh, come up with new formulas and test them with consumers before they come into bottled format. Because we believe that beverage trends start with mixologists and baristas. So we think that what's happening you know, in coffee shops and in cocktail bars actually is driving beverage trends in a much broader way nationally. Um, so we, we want to be at the center of that with a bar experience, but to maximize the potential of the space, we can't have a bar you know, working 24 seven. So instead of just having a bar, we have a retail portion of the space, which is the front of each of our drugstores, where consumers can come in, they can grab a bottle of any of our products, and then they just text us and tell us what they took. So it's all on the honor system. 
and they text us, they tell us, I just took a bottle of rose, and then it's all connected through the technology platform that we developed for, uh, for Dirty Lemon and for our other brands. Um, so, you know, that type of experience, and the reason why we did it is because consumers are looking for, you know, not only frictionless ways to receive their products direct to consumer um, in the places where they live and where they work, but also they want to be, you know, when they're out and about and they want, you know, and they, they want a fresh drink or whatever, you know, we want to give them the convenience of going in, grabbing a bottle, and not having to worry about standing in a line and checking out or anything like that. So we have a high concentration of customers in the areas that we're putting drugstores, and that's driving, obviously, our volume through the stores. And it was another thing where we were unsure of if it was going to be successful, but um, very quickly we saw that this was of a value to our consumers. Um, and yeah, it's a great, it's not only a great customer acquisition channel, but also a, a profitable, uh, you know, uh, way for us to, to retarget our current customers with new products. One thing that we do at the drugstore is every time we launch a new product, which we're launching one new beverage product every month this year. Um, so we have uh, an ingestible beauty product called Retinol that we just launched under Dirty Lemon. Just last week, we took all of the beverages out of the fridge. We can fit around 1,500 bottles in the fridge, and we fill it with the new product, and then we invite all of our customers in in New York City to come grab a bottle for free. So it encourages trial in, uh, in our locations, and, and we control the experience, which is, which is, I think, the most exciting part of it. So we don't have to, you know, my experience is, is in grocery with, uh, uh, with, with a kids' food company that, that I started. And, you know, we were selling products into Target and Whole Foods and Costco, and those channels, um, you know, I just always felt really uh, discouraged by the fact that we weren't really controlling any part of the consumer experience in those channels. Um, we didn't know if the product was on the bottom shelf or on the top shelf, and once you get to a certain scale, you really can't control it, um, even if you're working with brokers. And, um, you know, this is obviously a much more of a long tail customer acquisition and, and monetization strategy, but it's something that, uh, that gives us a lot more control and, and ultimately provides the customer with a better experience. So what was the hardest thing kind of, well, first of all, when you're bringing people in to come work for the organization, how much belief system do they have to believe that messaging is kind of, just because you know, we've talked, we have a DTC business that right. is you know, text to buy and even just in interview, it, like the DTC community just still is not mentally there. I think that that's probably one of the biggest mental leaps. Or you tell me, because one time we actually had a conversation, you said the hardest thing right now is finding good people. It's always finding good people. I would say it's less about having people believe the vision. I think maybe early on it was like what we were doing was really fringe, but I mean, it, it's rarely a day that goes by that we have that brands don't reach out to us asking if we can if we can license the platform and that's a big reason why we're investing in brands now um, is because we want to take a minority stake in some of these really great emerging beverage companies um, but then leverage our technology to be able to grow them very fast um, but yeah i think you know finding good people is extremely hard and um, anyone who started a company knows that and uh yeah but i don't i wouldn't say that the you know, that, it, that necessarily getting people to believe, because once you see it working, um, it's really easy to understand how this is, the, you know, this is the future of commerce. That messaging and the, in building this direct connection with consumers is, um, is going to have an, an amazing impact on the way that we transact and, and do business as a society. Um, if you look at SMS, and I don't have to sell this to you, but... No, sell it. You know, they, <laughs> phone numbers are typically reserved for, you know, your close friends and family members. Um, so there's, you know, a few things you don't give out, personal information, credit cards, phone numbers, you know, there's maybe a social security number. Um, you know, if you can build a direct connection with a consumer through a phone number um, and be a trusted source for the things that they want to, to purchase regularly, um, it, that's just such an incredibly valuable channel. And we want, you know, we take that very seriously. And, you know, we, we don't ever want to abuse that channel. We want to make sure that consumers know and understand that we're that the reason why we transact over text message is because we want to give them a more elevated experience than they would find with any other retailer or any other uh, online uh, uh, channel. So, any complaints? <laughs> uh, complaints about the consumers about, about yeah. no. I mean, I think that there's a a, a hesitation with consumers because. Uh, you know, we call it C-commerce, conversational commerce. I think that it's a new consumer behavior. So naturally, there's always a, uh, you know, I think that there's a hurdle of getting people to, to use the system for the first time. 
Um, but once that's overcome, I mean, and you realize that all you have to do is send a message and you can order at any time is, is you know, that's incredible. So um, do we have a coupon code set up for this? We do now. We do, okay. Oh, uh, no, Wait, what, is, is it? Is go it? We will. No, no, do, what is it? Do you know? Hold on one second. <laughs> Anyways, if anyone wants to play around with the platform. It's usually Bonin, isn't it? That, I like that code. We could do Bonin, yeah. We'll do Bonin, yeah. <laughs> No, so we Andy, can do what no, no, well, I think we set it up before this, but if you text us uh, or just go onto the website, you can look at the products. But if you text us um, and use the code Bonin, we'll do a, a free case with, with your, per, your first purchase. But it, regardless, you should just play around and you can, so text us, it's 917-588-0640. And you can see the way that the system works. So we bought a company last year, uh, the world's best chatbot, which was, uh, it was named by the Webbies. And um, it was a weather bot, but we're repurposing a lot of the technology that they, uh, that they built around uh, a focus on the weather, and we repurpose it for commerce. Um, so the way that our system works is that there's a bot on the front end that's answering uh, about half of the requests that we have inbound on the, you know, for the brand, uh, for, the, for Dirty Lemon. And then anything else gets pushed to customer service. And we have 24-7 live customer service that's answering questions from customers all the time. So we're managing hundreds of conversations at any given time. Um, so this can be done at scale. And I think that that's something that has always been uh, a question mark is, you know, can you really manage you know, this many conversations at scale? And the answer is yes. I think that the combination of technology and the personal element of actually engaging with consumers um, you know, works. And yeah. I feel like I'm cheating. It probably should be the messaging summit, but we'll go with whatever you guys choose. But uh, okay, so lightning round because I want to get. We have a number of conversational commerce, a number of brands that are looking at conversational commerce coming up and talking about kind of their fears, their potential opportunities. Like, you know, you have a very, uh, you you probably have the largest or the longest knowledge base in the industry. Brands that are looking at it, what do you recommend? Don't. So, no. Uh, well, if you're a beverage brand, you should come talk to us. <laughs> yeah. Um, Which yeah. is true. It's, you should, 100%. You know, the, I think that this, this channel of, of commerce is going to take on a lot of different paths. And I think a, the biggest misconception around messaging as a commerce channel is that people think that it's like money left on the table, and that's actually not the case. So I think it's, it's actually a, a, a rethinking of the way that you do business. And um, so I, I would say for anyone who's looking to jump into more of a, a conversational type of selling their product, um, you really need to just rethink the way that, I mean, we don't sell in grocery stores intentionally because we believe in a, in a, a, a single uh, a channel of distribution, which allows us to control the experience for the consumer. If we were selling in grocery stores everywhere and we had also the ability to purchase over text message, it just wouldn't matter. Um, so. Yeah, so I think that that's the biggest thing that I would recommend to brands is really think through the way that you do business and the way that this allows you to connect with the consumers in a, in a better way. It's just it's not something that's automated that you're gonna need that you just turn on and then it turns on revenue. Um, it needs to be a real uh, fundamental rethinking of the way that you sell products. And um, yeah, that's that. But I, I will say that Bonin between Bonin and Ryan, I think that they were the biggest influences and the. Uh, Ryan Leslie, uh, who was up before this, right? Yeah. 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 Um, the biggest the influences in in the in in my thinking of what could be done with SMS. Um, so I have a lot to thank for, to you guys, just because the I think that early on when this was so new for our industry, um, naturally there was like you know just being aligned with other progressive thinkers that were really pushing the boundaries of what could be done in the space was was really uh, you know fundamental to where we ended up taking it and where we will take it in the future. Obviously, our continued conversations now that we've become all friends. Um, but yeah. And uh, obviously, <laughs> continued free codes for people. Now, uh, so, <laughs> but 20 years from now, this still exists? This doesn't exist? This is uh, just commonplace? Like, what, 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 what becomes? So I think if you- Five to 10. I think if you look at Asia right now, it's the biggest indicator of where the US market will be heading. So you look at what you can purchase with WeChat in Asia right now. Um, I mean, messaging as a commerce channel is without question going to have an impact globally. It has not, we are not even close to where, it, this is my prediction of course, but we're not even close to where this is gonna go. And um, 
yeah, and I think the, I, I actually think the biggest power in this is going to be in uh, brands taking this on as an integral part of their of their selling. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be more excited. I mean, we are truly at such an exciting time in the history of CPG, in the history of beverages, in the history of, of communication where this is all possible because technology is moving so fast. And yeah, it's really... And consumer adoption is there too, which I think is the... Oh, other of course, piece, yeah. Which is, you know, I think the internet was interesting because most consumers still weren't really on the internet in the very early days. And then, the, you know, right. they kind of adopted at the same time. This is consumer adoption is so far ahead. Sure. But yet... It, participation in it is not so right anyway thank you very much zach let's give a huge round of applause thank you as always for uh